Hi everybody, it's me, Nessa. I hope you're having a good day. And I'm here to talk to you guys about percussion instruments. I know, kid drummers, we need to know percussion instruments. It's probably a good idea. Um, this is to prepare you, oh, prepare you, not prepare you, um, to play bingo that I made. Yay, bingo. You guys all love bingo. Um, who doesn't love bingo? I love bingo. Um, so this is a video to talk. I'm going to talk about different percussion instruments, and then you're going to watch the bingo video. Um, there's two of them that um, so you can play more than once. Um, that will then allow you to play bingo. Okay, but this is so that you are prepared. So let's get started. Um, so let me move myself. I'm a little in the way. Okay, so what you need to do to play bingo is you need to print off enough bingo cards for whoever's playing. Um, I made five, so up to five people can play. You can play with your siblings, you can play with your parents, whoever wants to play. Uh, and then you need to find stuff that will work as markers. So I suggest candy because you probably have maybe some candy around. Um, and then you get to eat it after. Um, or if you have a jar of coins, you could use that. That would work great. Anything that is little and multiple of. Even if you want to make your own markers. Because you have nothing else to do. You might as well make fun markers. Uh, no. That's okay. Alright, so then you're going to watch this video, which you're already here. So I assume you're already watching this. And then when you're done, you can then go and play the game. Okay? Let's get started. So, um, percussion instruments, a reminder, are instruments that you either hit or scrape to make a sound. You don't use air like a wind instrument, um, and you don't use strings like a string instrument. You just, you hit it or you scrape it. Um, there are so many different types of percussion instruments, so I'm only going to talk about 16 today, um, but there are like way more. It would, I'd be here for hours talking about all of them, so I picked some special ones that I think we should know. Okay. Um, so there's two types of percussion instruments. Uh, the first one is pitched. That means instruments that when you hit them, they make a specific pitch, so a specific note. Um, and then the other group is the instruments that are called unpitched, where if you hit them, they don't make a specific note. Okay. So we're going to start with pitched. So we're going to start with my favorite instrument of all time. I play the piano, so probably makes sense. Um, the piano. So you've all probably played the piano before. You've all probably seen it before. I hope you've seen it before. Um, it's actually a special instrument. It's a hybrid, which means it's part of both the percussion section of instruments that we're looking at, but it's also a string instrument. It's kind of like a double agent. Um, so when you hit a key on a piano, the hammer goes back and hits the string. So it's using you hitting something, but it's also using strings. Um, if you've played the piano, you know that there are pedals on the bottom that help you hold the notes. So we're going to listen to a little recording um, of the piano. You've all probably heard it, but I thought it might be nice to listen to the awesome Angela Hewitt, which we some of us were um, lucky enough to meet. So let's listen to her play some piano. Just a little. Okay, we'll stop it there. Um, so that is the lovely piano that you've all probably heard before. Um, all right, let's go to our second instrument. The xylophone. So you've all probably heard of the xylophone. It is um, similar to the piano as it is laid out like a keyboard. So we call it um, a keyboard percussion instrument. So if you look at this here, it is 
the notes are um, wooden bars that are laid out like a keyboard. So this side on the other side is what you think of as your white keys on a piano, and then the top ones are your black keys. So you notice they're in groups of three and two, like black keys are on the piano, and then they're laid out the same way. So if you know where a C is on the piano, you know where a C is on the xylophone. Um, and then you hit it with mounts, um, and it makes the wood vibrate, and then using these resonators underneath makes the sound sound nice and lovely. Um, so let me show you an example of what a xylophone sounds like. You've all probably heard Flight of the Bumblebee, but have you heard it on the xylophone? Alright, we'll stop it there. But you see how it has a cool woody sound to it? Alright, awesome. Let's go next. Alright, next we have the glockenspiel, which most of you have played with me or Mr. Zach. Um, but ours look a little different. This is a concert glockenspiel. It is very similar to a xylophone, except it is made out of metal, not wood. Um, and it's this one you notice doesn't have resonators underneath it because metal tends to vibrate easier than wood, um, so it makes the sound easier to go around. Um, this is what I want. I don't remember. Um, but some of them have resonators, um, like this one that this guy is playing. So let's listen to that. Gives you a taste. So, as you know, it's very similar to the xylophone. You play it the same way, but it's different a little bit. All right, let's look at our next um, and final keyboard instrument. So, this is called a marimba. It is very similar to a xylophone. Um, it's also made out of wood, but it is way bigger um, and it has a lower, more woody sound to it. Um, you'll notice the resonators look a little different. Um, on the low notes, and it just has, it's really big. Um, but you play it the same way. So let me show you an example. This is a great example. I found Mr. Zach playing a marimba, so let's listen to that. Stop it. Cool, right? Sounds very, it's similar to the cell phone, but it just has a little different sound. All right, that's it for keyboard instruments. Let's go to now pitched drum instruments. So, first we've got the timpani. Um, you've all probably seen the timpani at our concerts. They are really big drums um, and they're special because they can actually, each drum makes a certain note when you hit it and you can change the note, there's a pedal on it that you move and it'll change how tight the head is so that changes the note. Um, so depending on what song you have, you need to have the right number of drums to play it. So some songs might have two timpani um, and some might have five. So you need to have the right number of drums and you need to have the right note. Okay? You hit it with big mallets um, and let me show you what it sounds like. Not like this. This is an intro. 
What is it? Sounds like a glockenspiel field to me. Oh yeah, um, he's actually doing really fancy stuff by changing the note while he's playing. Very fancy. All right, we got one more pitched instrument to look at: the steel drum. Um, some of you maybe never heard of steel drum. It's an awesome instrument. Um, it's originally from Trinidad and Tobago. It is technically not actually a drum. We call it a steel drum, but a drum has to have a membrane. Um, this is metal, so it's not technically a drum. They call it um, a steel pan as well um, because it's like a metal sheet. Um, and the different parts of it are pitched to different notes. So you can actually play different scales depending on what the notes are pitched as. Um, and you hit it with either rubber sticks or some people use um, little scrapery things. Um, but let me show you how cool it sounds. This is, I love steel drum. And this is a classic tune. If any of you love classic rock, you'll probably know this song. Red, red wine. stop it before I jam too much. So yeah, it's really cool. You see how the different parts of it are different notes and they're hitting which part they want. Very cool. Alright, now we're going to move on to, if it will let me, unpitched instruments. So instruments that don't make a note when you hit them. Um, so there are more of these, so I'm going to look at more of them. Let's do it. Right, so the first one we've got is a snare drum. Um, you've all probably seen a snare drum. They are, it's a special drum that is probably the most important drum in a, in a drum set. Um, it's the one that you usually principally are playing. Um, and it's a drum, but then there are little metal um, strings underneath it that when you hit it, they vibrate and they make a special sound. Um, you can actually turn the snares on or off depending on what you want and it's played with drumsticks. So here is an example of, once again, Mr. Zach um, playing it. And he, is, he doesn't have a beard in this, so he looks completely different. Didn't mean to do that. Um, so yeah, that's an example of that. All right, next we have the bass drum. Um, I'm sure you've all seen these. These are, if you're looking at a drum set, they're the big drum that sits on the ground. That usually there's a kick pedal that somebody is hitting, and then it hits the drum. Um, but in a concert like a band, um, a big orchestra or something, they would have it all by itself like you see on here and you actually hit it while it's like in front of you. Um, it's a really big drum so it makes a really low sound um, and it's played with a big mallet. So let's, let's listen to it. Yeah. 
classic big drum sound. All right, what do we got next? All right, so next one is the djembe. Um, you all know what the djembe is, as you've all played them with me and Mr. Zach. Um, so, but quickly, they're from West Africa. They are a hand drum. Um, just play them with your hands. And um, as you know, the bottom part is kind of a resonant chamber, so the sound kind of travels down the bottom, so you have to tilt it up so that the sound can get out. If you don't, it sounds muffled and not great. Um, I'm going to show you, I know you all know what it sounds like, but I wanted to show you this cool master djembe um, soloist who's going to play. Sounds pretty cool. We don't usually sound like that. We're 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 not master djembe players. Um. Okay. Next. All right. So next we've got the cymbals. You've all, I'm sure, seen cymbals before. Um, there are so many different types of cymbals. I just put them all in one. Um, but they are in common that they are a big metal um, disc that when you hit it or when you hit it against another it vibrates and makes um, like a crashy sound. Um, the classic ones we know are the crash symbol which are the two symbols that you um, put together um, or a suspended symbol which is a symbol that's put up on a stand and then you hit it. Um, I'm going to show you this really neat um, symbol solo. I really like it. So. A gong is also a symbol, technically. It gets really crazy. Um, if you want to watch that, go for it. It's pretty cool. Okay, so that's it. Next, we've got the triangle, the classic triangle. Um, so you all know what a triangle is, but quickly, it's a piece of metal that's bent into a triangle. You hold it with a little piece of string on top, and then you hit it with a little piece of metal we call a beater. Um, and then it sounds pretty cool. This guy does a really interesting um, different techniques that I thought you'd find interesting. Yeah, so that's the triangle. Uh, next we've got the claves. So they are, you've probably seen them in Kid Drummers. Um, we only have one, I think, there. But um, they are two big pieces of wood that are like big dowels, so big cylinders. Um, and then you hit them together and they make a nice wood sound. Um, you hold them, specifically you don't hold them like, like this because then nothing's going to vibrate, right? Because sound is just vibration. So if you're clasping them, they're not going to vibrate. So what you do is you hold one in your hand that sits in your hand and then you hit it with the other one and this one in your hand vibrates. Um, I'll show you this guy playing it. Classic wood sound, right? All right. 
Next we have the tambourine. Um, so the tambourine is classic as well. You probably all played the tambourine. Um, but what makes the tambourine is it's a wooden um, circle frame that has little metal symbols on it, um, which are called zills. And they jingle when you hit it. Um, it also has a drum head on the side. Um, usually, some don't. Um, apparently, I was looking it up. Technically, if they don't have a drum head, they're not supposed to be a tambourine. They're not supposed to be technically a tambourine, but I don't think anyone cares about that. <laughs> I'd call it a tambourine. But um, yeah, so you hold it with one hand, and then you hit the drum head with the other hand, and you get a good sound. I'll show you this guy. He's doing different techniques on the tambourine. They sound pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So you can do different things with it. Alright, next we have the Guiro. Um, I love the Guiro. It's super fun. Um, so what the Guiro is, is it is a, originally, um, it's from Latin America. It's a really, originally a big gourd, actually, um, that they would hollow out. They cut the end off of it. That's why it looks kind of like a gourdy shape. Um, and then they would put notches in the side of it. And then what you do is you scrape along the notches with something, and it makes a cool, scrapey sound. Um, the ones we use now aren't always gourds. These ones you'll see are plastic, but um, they still make ones that are made out of gourds. So let me show you how this one sounds. This guy's using a brush against it, but you can use you often use a stick. So yeah, that's cool. Alright, what we got next? The maracas! Um, so I'm sure you've all played the maracas before. You've had a rattle sometime. Um, they are often thought of as not very important instruments, but they're really important in Caribbean and Latin music, um, where they came from. So what it is, is it's, it's a hollowed out thing. It's either these ones on the right are wood um, that are hollowed out, but sometimes they're made out of like hide like a drum head and then put stuff inside um, and then they put usually um, either beads or like dried beans um, little things that when you shake it will will vibrate I don't know what they put in them now um, but they're originally like be or beans that you had um, so let me show you this guy does some cool stuff he talks a lot so I'm gonna skip until he's playing. So what I want to do is um, just show you like some improvisations. I don't want him to talk. I don't care. I'm sure he's great stuff to say. So yeah. All right, we've got one more instrument to go. The castanet. All right, so you maybe have seen a castanet before. Um, they are wooden discs that kind of look like cymbals, uh, kind of the same shape, that are attached usually by a string. Um, and then when you usually hold them in one hand and when you click them together, they make like a clacking sound. Um, they're very big. 
in, I believe, like Spanish music. Um, so let me show you. This is really neat um, song this guy's doing. So funky, I love it. Um, so yeah, and that's our last instrument we're gonna look at. We've looked at sixteen cool instruments. All right, so now you know so many different percussion instruments. You are a master, um, so you can take this knowledge now. Um, you should have this PowerPoint if you want to look at the whole videos of these. Um, we should have that for you. But now you are ready to do percussion bingo. So head on over to my other videos. You can play with your family or friends and I hope you really enjoy. Okay? Bye!